Hannibal Meadow is acclaimed by critics as a major figurative expressionist of his generation. His paintings are characterized by an implosive impact. At the same time, they have an uplifting quality as they celebrate the triumph of the human spirit. He was born on July 7, 1937 and was christened Luis Claudio Veloso Olmedo. His nickname was Anib, the reverse of Bino, derived from Bambino after the legendary American baseball icon in the 30s, Babe Ruth, whom his father greatly admired. Onib grew up in what was then a quiet suburb of Manila during pre-war years, Sampalo, which is now a bustling residential and commercial district. He was the fifth in a family of ten siblings, Lito, Polo, Ceci, Jovi, Onib, Chibu, Patsy, Papoose, Mike, and the youngest, Jack. His father was Luis Olmedo Sr. from Manila. His mother was Lourdes Velosa from Leyte. After graduating with a BS degree in architecture at the Mapua Institute of Technology, he took the board exams and placed seventh. A few years later, after a couple of stints with architectural companies, he set up his own firm with his college friend Manola Evalia as partner. As fate would have it, Evalia decided to migrate to the States for greener pastures, while Olmedo chose to stay in the Philippines. Soon after, tired of the rigid structuralism required in architecture, he shifted gears in his career path and ventured into art as a full-time profession. In 1967, he met and fell in love with Bettina Rodriguez, an advertising and public relations professional. They got married in 1969 and became the proud parents of two lovely and talented girls, Gisela, nicknamed Bambi, and Francesca Joanna, nicknamed Franjo. Bambi is married to Rev Araneta. They have a cute four-year-old son, Sebastian or Basti, Onib Olmedo's first grandchild. Franjo is married to Dr. Vicente Arias III. They have a beautiful baby girl named Isabel, Anib Olmedo's second grandchild. When Olmedo ventured into the world of Philippine art in 1971, art collectors were confounded, shocked, deeply disturbed, and even horrified by his works. For Olmedo's art was a total departure from the happy paintings that Filipinos had been exposed to for over three decades. Despite the early triumph of the modernist movement in the Philippine art scene, the late 60s and early 70s were dominated by conventional paintings that depicted the bright and colorful facets of life in our country. Thus, when Olmedo made his artistic debut, the uninitiated found many of his works horrendous and even repugnant. This is because Olmedo espoused the tenets of figurative expressionism which in the 60s and 70s did not have any appeal for Filipinos. His works were not beautiful when one gauged them in the terms of the classical standards of beauty. They were characterized by dark, somber, and depressing tones. In many of his paintings, Olmedo breaks all the rules, disregarding the traditional principles of composition, color, harmony, and form. The most salient feature of Olmedo's works is the expressionistic idiom of distortion. As art professor and critic Alice Guillermo explains, None of his works is picture-pretty, as Olmedo strips down the layers of muscle and nerve to expose the soul, deliberately using distortion of the human features. Many of Olmedo's paintings zero in on the human face, with a man or a woman staring at the viewer with ineffably sad eyes which speak of their inner torment. Olmedo's career was launched with a series of paintings created in the 60s and exhibited in 1971, in an art show that revolved around the theme, Singkong Suka, the Filipino term for five centavos worth of vinegar, which was then the retail price 
of the minimum amount of this household commodity at the smallest sari-sari stores. In this art exhibit, Olmedo created sour vinegar portraits of the denizens of Sampaloc. He used their faces as vehicles for his psychological probes and explorations of the soul of the common man. In subsequent art exhibits, build a skinsing suka and venting suka, meaning 15 and 20 centavos worth of vinegar. Olmedo further expounded on this theme. During this period, Olmedo's paintings were of specific people, his works containing props and personal effects that indicated his subject's social class, their occupation, and their circumstances in life. Among the most unforgettable characters he painted were people he met in his neighborhood in Sampaloc and his watering hole in Ermita. One of them is the Sampagita girl. In many of his works, however, Olmedo comes up with more universal characterizations, focusing on the essence of the inner life of man, his inner demons, his fears, his anxieties, and his personal angst. Among his most critically acclaimed works are black and white ink wash paintings portraying emaciated individuals with haunting skeletal faces and the dazed look of the demented. In the 80s and 90s, Olmedo expanded his artistic horizons, venturing into the portrayal of other subjects including musicians, corporate executives, and ballerinas. His foray into the magical world of ballet was inspired by his two daughters' passion for this dance form. Olmedo also expanded his artistic palette, with his colors becoming brighter and more vibrant. Whatever his subject, however, there is still Onib Olmedo's signature trademark of distortion, unique composition, and multiple perspectives. In short, Olmedo remained consistent in his artistic vision. He adhered to the principles of expressionism even when depicting such felicitous subjects as flowers, fruits, and other still lives. With his unique style and perceptive vision, Onib Olmedo had the satisfaction of earning international recognition for his work during his lifetime. Olmedo won two awards at the prestigious international art competition in Cagnes-sur-Mer, France in 1992, the very first Filipino to be accorded such a distinction. His award-winning works were two ink wash paintings. The apartment shows the interiors of a two-level shanty, depicting how Filipinos sublimate their grief through inner peace derived from their passion for their music and their deep, abiding faith. The other award-winning painting is entitled Concert in the Alley, part of Olmedo's New York series, which depicts the tension between a genuine appreciation of culture exemplified by a person playing a violin on the fire escape of his New York flat and modern society's obsession with life on the fast lane, symbolized by the motorcycles on the lower part of the painting. In the 90s, Olmedo's art came of age. He was catapulted into national prominence, with his art exhibits enjoying unprecedented success. The adulation exhibited by the public for Olmedo's work marked a new era in the history of Philippine art when Filipino viewers had become more sophisticated and discerning in their taste for the finer things of life. They now understood the nuances of expressionist art, appreciating paintings for their cathartic value. Critics now assert that Olmedo has played a critical role in the history of Philippine art. At the summit of his career, he succeeded in raising the art consciousness of Filipinos to a level that went beyond the appreciation of paintings that were merely ornamental. Moreover, he continues to exert a vast influence on the young Filipino artists of the 21st century. Their works show that they have been inspired by their icon's worldview and his distinctive expressionistic style. Olmedo died in 1996, when he was only 59 years old. But he had already reached the apex of his career, earning not only critical acclaim, but also commercial success, with the public developing a genuine appreciation for his figurative expressionist art. It is therefore indisputable that Onib Olmedo has emerged as one of the major Filipino artists of the 20th century. Indeed, Onib Olmedo has left a lasting legacy for a whole new generation of Filipinos, leaving an indelible imprint on the history of Philippine art.